So now we are recording. So um, our first group pre project presentation is going to be social media. So I'm going to time you guys. You have about five minutes to present, and then we'll do five minutes for Q&A. Social media, who wants to start us off? Um, well, actually, I'm the only one from my group who's here, so I will be presenting alone. <laughs> Thanks, Josie. Um, but yeah, uh, slide present. Oh, here we go. Um, all right, can everyone see it? It looks great. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, we are <laughs> the social media group. This year it was me, LA, Leo, and Fatima. Um, and so, yeah, let's get into it. Um, as I'm going through the presentation, um, if you could, I want you to think about what the role of social media and activism is, um, just as like a fun related activity. Um, so you can type in the chat or just think about it. Um, what do you think the role of social media in activism is? Um, okay, so for 2021, we were really trying to create goals that were um, realistic for, you know, a pandemic, um, you know, and on top of that, all of us in this group were are juniors or seniors. So um, we tried not to be too ambitious. Um, <laughs> so, you know, our main one was just get 400 followers by June. Um, our second one was be a helpful and accurate source of information for New York City youth while also being a voice for the YLC. Um, and then establish and maintain collaborations with other organizations. Um, and well, how did we do? So our outcomes, we helped multiple organizations spread their events and their posts. Um, we can, you know, our DMs have a bunch of, um, are filled with, you know, other organizations that we've collaborated with and that we talked to. Um, as of today, we have 351 followers and 74 posts. Um, so you can see that we haven't quite reached our goal yet. Um, and, you know, that's how it is. And hopefully we'll be able to work on it a tiny bit more before June, and then we might get 400, but 351 is not too bad. Um, and then we also, from a more, um, you know, learning standpoint, we we learned a lot about what it takes to maintain a professional social media page. Um, so like maintaining, creating content is really, really hard sometimes. Like it's, um, you know, what with like, uh, you know, creating a color scheme and something that makes your page look professional and aesthetically pleasing, um, knowing your purpose um, and physically just gathering all the information and putting it down into a couple of simple bullet points that people will actually want to see on social media. Um, so that was a challenge. Um, and then accomplishments, things that we are particularly proud of. Um, like I said, we were able to partner with various organizations <laughs> um, through our DMs. Um, and, you know, this, so this includes like several green teams from different high schools. Um, this organization called Kinetic Communities Consulting, which focuses on spreading clean energy and helping people get access to clean energy and um, Fridays for Future, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Um, and, you know, on top of that, we develop partnerships. Um, so, you know, I, I think that was one of our main strengths for this year. We taught, you know, we maintain these connections. Um, and then we also, we just spread awareness on these sustainability events, many of which you know, were really, really wonderful. Um, so I'm glad that we were able to do that. Um, and then, so the problems that we faced, um, first was lack of engagement. Um, I think that, you know, our account is really, um, we're sort of in a part of Instagram that's very focused on sustainability, but 
I think that a lot of our followers are other organizations other organizations or other people who are also focused on sustainability. So I think that um, one of the main problems that our future YLC social media team will have to address is, um, you know, sort of um, working on reaching out to New York City youth who are not involved in sustainability. Um, and I know there are other groups focused on that as well, but you know, I think that we have, we're in a really interesting spot where we can do, we can work on that, but we still, we're not sure how to do that, quite honestly. Um, and so we struggled with that. Um, and, you know, we are also, like I said, our team was busy. Um, we're all juniors and seniors. It was, we were in a pandemic this year. Um, you know, there was a lot going on. So we tried to have bi-monthly Friday meetings as much as possible where we sort of discussed everything that we wanted to do on the Instagram page. Um, and then, you know, overall COVID-19, like it was, it was a really, really tough time for everyone. And mainly we just didn't want to, um, we didn't want to put too much pressure about, you know, climate action and sustainability on people who saw our posts. Um, you know, we didn't want to like, uh, give, put so much pressure on people that they felt, you know, suffocated by, you know, first COVID, now climate change, now, you know, all of these different things. So we were trying to maintain an optimistic tone and, you know, take Jersey, limited just, opportunities. To, I just want to give yeah. you a heads up that you're already past time. So if you can oh. try to wrap things up in the next minute or so. Yeah, yeah, a last slide. Um, Basically for the future, we um, big thing is we want you, the social media team in the future to think about what you want the role of social media to play in the YLC. Do we want to distribute YLC information? Do we want to be an ambassador? Do we want to um, work with other parts of the YLC? Um, I, we would suggest create a lot of content early on and then you can describe, decide on posting schedules. Um, and yeah, sorry I went over time. There we go. <laughs> That's okay. It was packed with info. It was awesome. Um, round of applause. Um, anybody have any questions? You can share them in the chat or on mute. I have a question. What was like your most successful social media post? Um, good question. Uh, well, you know, I haven't checked that in a while, but I remember we, um, we we looked at that a while ago and it was the posts where we had pictures of each other and, you know, of the YLC on there. And like, you know, we were sort of, it was actual people, which was interesting. And I'm sad we weren't able to post as much of that now what with Zoom, but yeah. Anyone else? I agree, it was a good question. Um, I have a quick one. Um, you mentioned some of your hurdles and I know you guys are really close to 400, but not quite at your target. Um, do you have any like final tactics that you wanna try to implement to reach that goal? Yeah, um, we have been trying well, I, I personally have been trying like the tactic of just following people with similar interests to ours. Um, and that does work a little bit. I mean, you know, I think um, it's kind of a slow method, but um, that does work. And I think we're trying, we're going to try to post at least, you know, a couple more times before the official end of the school year. Um, so yeah, I, I still think it's possible 50 followers in about a month, month, two months. Awesome, I think we have time for one more. I have a question. Um, do you hope to like use other platforms or stick mainly to Instagram? Um, yeah, I think, I think for the future, it'd be really cool if we expanded um, to like Twitter or, um, TikTok, I don't know, something. 
something like that. I think that would be, you know, it would expand our audience, definitely. Um, I know we tried to do Twitter a while ago. I just, I don't know how to use Twitter. So that's going to be a challenge for someone else to face. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a quick, not a question, but an idea to get more followers. Maybe you're doing this. I was wondering, we have several small groups that are working with uh, middle school green teams. I was wondering if you're doing anything to get those students or cross promote to get those students on board. So it's like an audience we already have some hand in. Yeah, Sorry, that's guys. a great idea. Um, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll write that down. I'll try that. It's a great idea. Thank you. Cool. We might have to have some mentorship collaboration with you guys. Um, all right, we're going to move on to the next one, just so we don't get too behind schedule. The next uh, group will do the virtual green team. Cool. All right, I'm going to share the slide. So we're presenting what we, the slides that we shared at the event, so we can kind of walk you through what we did with the um, middle schools. I can figure this out. All right. Um, well, so this was our second event. The first one, um, Isabel and I held in December, so a while back, but. We focus a lot of energy on this one, and we had a bunch of new Wallace members helping us, and even Gabby and Michael joined us for the event, which was fun, and thank you to them. <laughs> um, so um, I think who is going to talk with the icebreaker? <laughs> I can speak on the icebreaker. So what we did was first uh, we made breakout rooms, just a bunch of random breakout rooms and using the Google Jamboards, uh, they were able to, in our, each group, they were able to make different wallpapers or like the backgrounds that they could use later on to turn into their Zoom backgrounds. Uh, so we did that for about say 15, 20 minutes. Um, and each of them had a specific theme. Yeah, that was the one that all the YLC members was using. Uh, Camilla has it on her thing right now. But uh, each was like specific to the group because we had different breakout rooms that we would be using. So we had the regular, the scrambled breakout room. And then we had like the school breakout room. Now this was the scrambled breakout room. So they were able to use like, this was the background breakout rooms that were used for the scrambled rooms. I hope this makes sense. But um, they were able to use a specific color for their, um, for their breakout room. They were able to come up with a name and a couple mini themes that they would have within their wallpaper. I keep saying wallpaper, but it is their Zoom background. That's what they were doing. I hope that makes sense. Cool. Yeah, and the goal is with this activity was just to get them, you know, talking to some new kids and, you know, sharing their common interests of sustainability because all the kids that joined were part of their school's green teams. Um, how do I? So then we just had everyone like share out what they did. Um, and at the end, I'll go to the jam board and show you guys all the backgrounds because they're really cute. Um, and then I think Isabel is not here, but the next activity was um, a web just to get them kind of just thinking, um, starting with like their name and then just some interest and hoping to connect them all back to sustainability and just climate action. So some of these, if your interest was art, then you could think about how you can use it towards um, posters or infographs. So this was just a fun activity again, just get them thinking and this one was done in scrambled rooms again, so they got to know each other more and just continue the conversation. Again, they shared out. Um, Michael, if you want to talk about this one. Yeah, so I made a resource document for the students to be able to um, stay sustainable and continue their advocacy when they go back to school because 
because they had their action plans and it was really exciting to see like how in depth they really talked about what they wanted to do so I wanted to make sure that like even if they're not going to work through their schools they can do something else like on the outside like where to buy from or like what um, opportunities they have in their area so it was like sectioned um, by borough so from Staten Island to the Bronx they had all these different organizations and resources based on the borough so they could continue their activism uh, wherever they are and that's And then our final activity was the elevator pitch, which was done within their schools. So this was just to get them thinking about actions or projects they could do at their schools and then having something that they could share with their principals or other school administration. So we gave them um, 20 minutes just to, you know, first discuss what problem they wanted to address and and come up with a solution and finally wrap it all up in like a two minute um, pitch, which then they all shared. And it was just great to hear kind of their ideas and their commitment to certain aspects of their school that they wanted to see. Um, and then again, they all shared out. And finally, we just had this closing thing where we actually have a Google Classroom where most of the students are linked to so we can keep them updated in the future. If we're gonna hold more of these events or if there's any other opportunities, if they wanna share anything. And there's been some kids that are very active on there, um, you know, sharing their stories. One of them wants to start with a YouTube channel with start uh, sharing their progress. Um, so that was very cute. So that was the slides. I'm gonna stop sharing this. Camilla, just so you know, you're at time. You're fine to still, if I, know, I think you wanted to share some examples, but can we maybe do some questions while you're pulling those up? Yeah. Um, and I would also love, Michael, the, the document that you made was so amazing. Can you share that link in the chat? I really want people to be able to take a look at it because it's such a wonderful uh, combination of resources from every borough. Um, awesome. So uh, Camilla, feel free to share your screen while, while we're taking the questions, yeah? Um, and you guys can just unmute. It'll be a little tougher for me to see you. So just unmute if you have a question. No, I have a question. Um, did you... Did you do this one at 3 p.m. again? I think that's when the other one was. I'm just curious if you guys have kind of figured out what was a good time for students. Yeah, so we actually pushed it back. I think it was four, um, just so we can kind of give them time if they were in person to go back to their homes and log in um, and also just give them a period off of their screens between then. I think you guys did 4.30 to six, actually. Okay. Probably yeah, it was a longer time. session. Yeah. Nice. We decided to go later. Cool. Thank you. And this is our cute team. <laughs> Took a while to coordinate, but we finally got a good photo. <laughs> Anyone else have questions? Camilla, do you have any questions for anybody else? It's okay if we don't. I have a question about the classroom. Are you guys planning on keeping that going for like the summer and for next year? Or what are the kind of plans for the Google Classroom? Yeah, well, hopefully if this project you know, continues into the next school year, we'll keep that alive again, just for communications. Um, and again, like posting more resources. Um, if Michael wants to update the portal and kind of let them know. Um, so just again, just like another means of communication, but we haven't talked too much about it yet. All right. Um... So we're gonna shift gears. Um, Jocelyn has offered to go, she has to run really quick. So 
Um, we're going to do a really quick overview of the newsletter, but really first, let's do a big round of applause for the virtual green team meeting. That was awesome. Two great presentations to start. So Jocelyn, take it away. And if you don't have time for a Q&A, that's totally fine. Okay. I am so sorry that I have to leave early. Um, okay. Okay. So uh, similar to Josie, um, the rest of my group members are unfortunately not here. So I'm from the newsletter. Oh, I'm so sorry. And so is Anir, Chelsea, and Carol, but unfortunately they're not able to be here right now. And so for the outcomes, we actually switched uh, platforms uh, midway because we decided that it would be much more easier because we just thought it would just run the overall group newsletter much more efficiently. So we all agreed on that. And surprisingly, we were able to reach at least 120 people and it's actually still growing the amount of visitors that we are getting. So that's a really huge accomplishment that me and the rest of my members were able to achieve. So we're really proud of that. And we, are, we also uh, developed six different newsletters, one for each month that um, has passed. So um, continue on with the highlights and successes. Uh, we were able to expand our audience, as I've stated previously. And I feel like the main reason why we were able to achieve that is due to the diverse topics that we discuss. Although this program is about sustainability, we are able to have creative liberty and talk about practically anything that we desire. Um, similar to this, we were able to share valuable knowledge through our newsletter and spread awareness about different topics that we are passionate about and we are also able to advocate for them. And as I've stated previously, we do have creative liberty and we uh, do have the um, ability to express ourselves with our own writing. However, there were some challenges throughout um, the group. Um, it was very difficult to communicate through email because again, we are in a very uh, weird and awkward stage as of in the as of right now so it was kind of hard so we just had some zoom meetings to try and maintain communication with each other and um, a lot of members did leave the team unfortunately but instead of being upset about that we took that as a grain of salt and you know we decided to work even harder to try our absolute best to produce um, our newsletters um, and meeting the deadlines that we had so for our future project directions, um, we actually do have a May edition coming up very soon. I believe that the deadline is May 16th. So uh, keep a watch on that. And I do believe that um, the group project should definitely continue next year. Why? Because it is definitely a very great resource, not just for the audience, but for ourselves. Why? Because again, we are able to advocate for different topics that not many individuals are aware of and we are also able to provide different resources whether it be whether it be um, websites or different events or foundations that do help out different individuals um so yeah that's what i think we should we should continue doing wonderful thank you so much jocelyn um do you have to run or do you want to take one or two questions no it's okay i could take a, a few questions before i leave okay great I know that you guys have worked really hard, especially since people left. So kudos to you and thank you for presenting. I'm glad we got to learn from you. Um, you. Does anyone have any questions? Do we want to do a round of applause really quick now? <laughs> <laughs> um, any questions? Lorraine asked one in the chat. Lorraine, do you want to unmute and share? Yeah, so it was a great presentation and I had a question about the number of people you guys reached. You mentioned it was 120, like the maximum. Mm -hmm. Was that like the total amount of like all the newsletters or was it just a peak for one of the um, editions? Um, from all of our editions, I'm pretty sure we reached uh, 120 in total, the amount of visitors. Okay. So your current, like to clarify, your current platform is Wix? No, we actually changed it. We actually changed it to Canva. Um, okay. 
What's your favorite thing that you or one of your team members made for the newsletter? Oh gosh. Oh, I have a lot of, so for me, I know Anir, he had a really like fantastic idea, which it was, we unfortunately weren't able to really implement it due to like uh, the lack of time, but he had this like really cool idea where we um, released um, a newsletter every week, but it was based on the YOC. So we wanted uh, um, different individuals from, you know, the YOC core to be a part of that. So, but unfortunately we didn't have enough time, but hopefully um, the next, uh, like the following newsletter uh, team is able to implement that because I really thought that was a cool idea to also include you guys into it because it would just make the process much more, you know, fun. So that's something that I was looking forward to, but unfortunately we couldn't do that. Well, thank you so much, Jocelyn. Thank you. Thank you. Um, ooh, there we go. Um, and thanks for sticking around. I really appreciate it. Um, we'll have the next group go. Let's do um, student facing resource development. All right, I'll share my screen right now. Oops. I think Gabby's gonna start us off, so. Yeah, so hi everyone. We are the resource development project. So what we've done basically is we spent months creating a guide for other high school students um, to enter into the environmental advocacy world easier and just have like support with all that kind of stuff. So we have a couple of different the, what do I call it? the little packet that we created. Um, there's some green team guides. There's a plastic guide. There's just a bunch of different things. Sorry, I'm having trouble moving through the slides. Let me just figure, okay, there we go. Um, so for our timeline, we, I guess it's not on here, but in the fall, Anna and I kind of outlined like what we wanted in the packet and what was important to us. And then in January, we first met as like a group with everyone um, new in the team. And then by like February, everyone kind of chose a section that they were excited about and started to draft that out. Um, and then we worked through that throughout March. And then in April, it was mostly just getting everyone's pieces together and formatting the actual packet. And then which we submitted to our advisor, Christina, who's here. And then um, earlier just this week, Anna and I had a really helpful meeting with her where we kind of went over our um, final draft that we submitted. Um, and went through like edits that we have to do. And so now we're hoping to get it out by May 12th, I believe. So for challenges, um, one of the challenges was not being able to meet enough due to COVID and virtual restrictions and virtual meetings in school made it difficult for us to find a time that worked for everyone and being able to talk about what we needed to do for the project. And we also didn't make our initial deadline because we were supposed to have everything formatted by Earth Day, but we missed the deadline. So everything got pushed back a bit, like Ivy said, to like May 12th. Okay, so some of our successes um, have obviously been that our packet was in fact completed. Um, we will be distributing um, our, um, I guess, our packet via the, or via however you want to say, the Office of Sustainability's newsletter, and and it'll be put on the office's resource portal. And finally, this means that a really large number of high school students will have access to it by the end of the year. Yeah, with that being said, um, we plan to distribute the link to the packet like as soon as we can. And I think 
we can maybe like put it on Instagram or in the newsletter. And then as individuals, as like members of YLC, we can bring it to our own green teams and environmental clubs. I was just gonna add something that I just thought of, but earlier this year, Josie and I did a lot of like outreach to different organizations. So we'll probably use those channels too, just to kind of get our packet out to as many people as possible. Uh, so some of us are graduating, but our future plans for whoever is working on student development in the future is to keep spreading the packet to as many high school students as possible and obviously make edits as we return to in-person learning next year. And even though our current packet is very much New York specific, it can really be adapted throughout the US because a lot of sustainability activism is pretty standard. And if it's well received by schools in New York City, we could try giving it as a resource to other schools or climate networks that Ivy mentioned we are connected with. and. Uh, like I said, as we return to in-person learning, as our school environments change, the packet, rather than rewriting a new one, we could just update and revise the information in it and add new resources. So it's almost like a living document. Um, so now I guess we just wanted to show you kind of what our actual packet looks like as of now. So give me one sec. <laughs> Ivy, you want me to put the link in the chat? I actually have it open. Oh yeah, that would be great. And I can also send the link. Yes, you guys can feel free to take a look. Um, this is not our final draft, but if you're interested mm -hmm. in what it looks like right now. Um, yeah. yeah, so I have it on my, I can like go through quickly on my screen. So this is kind of like our cover. And then we have a table of contents. And then, so basically each of these sections was made by like a different person in the group. Um, we have like an intro and Anna put this like feedback form. So when people do get this packet, they can give us feedback so we can like improve it and make it a living document as Valerie said. Um, and we have a green team guide, which I think we can definitely incorporate Michael's groups like document and resources. So that would be fun. And then we have project ideas here. We have like a climate action planning section um sustainability and food um reducing plastic usage a sustainable return to school once we eventually go back to in person um and then kind of a section about like your adult sustainability coordinators at school and how to contact them and start working with them and then we also put contacts. Um, we're gonna revise this page though and make it just like youth climate organizations rather than just like having this Office of Sustainability staff section here. Um, and then on the bottom on this contact page, we just put the New York City Office of Sustainability just general email here, along with all of our social media and websites for the Youth Leadership Council too and then all of like our members individual emails so people can like reach out to us if they have any questions or need advice for any like climate action planning they're doing in their own schools or communities. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Amazing. This looks so thorough. I can't wait to dive in more more deeply. Round of applause everybody. Such great work. Um does anybody have any questions? Um, well, I'm wondering, I know you talked about this a little, but is there anything you have in mind that you'd want to include on maybe a future student resource development or something that you wish you included, but didn't have time to include? Um, well, originally we were thinking about including a calendar um, of like events the office is holding and also that we have, that the YLC was going to host. Um, but since we were publishing it sort of late in the school year, we realized that probably wouldn't be so beneficial for this year. Um, but if we do update it for the fall, then we would probably try to include a calendar of some sort. Yeah. I have a question. Um, I love thinking of this as a living document, but one of the things that I find challenging about Canva is it's like not the most editable or share like shareable link. So I'm curious if you guys have any thoughts as to how to maintain that kind of shareability because like you need to make sure somebody has access to it and all that stuff. 
Well, no. I guess, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, I was just gonna say that I think our whole group shared on it. Um, and if we're planning to send it by link form, I think that gives the person that clicks on the link like just a live version of the Canva. So hopefully that means that we can kind of edit it whenever. And if people still have that like link that they'll be able to see the newest version of our packet. So I think that's what we were planning right now. You do want to make sure that you share a link that isn't editable, though. Otherwise, people can mess your stuff up. Yeah. Yeah, we also, if we share it in a PDF version, we can always update it like every semester or quarter or something so people have it. Great ideas. Absolutely. I was listening to the newsletter theme presentation. That could be something that uh, every like couple of months, we just include our updated resource packet with the newsletter so people can see mm -hmm. what some information else. So we can take one more question. Less of a question, more like I think that same idea of like building it into the other groups works. I think also building it into the Instagram page, like featuring different parts of the, like give a little taste about a section of the packet and then link to it in your bio or something like that. I love this making connections. I love that idea. Anybody else? I like Sarah's snaps, so I'm going to replicate that and we'll move on to the last group. I think it's the last one, right? We're on to mentorship, I believe. Yes. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. I don't know if you see it. Yeah? Yeah, we see it. Okay. So, um, I'm going to start now. So, uh, our practice is a mentorship pro project. Wait, present. I'm sorry. Okay. So project overview, how did we start? We started with an idea, uh, mostly Amina, yeah. So um, over the summer, Amina and I, we planned this project from scratch. So we didn't really have like a basis or a foundation. Um, and then in January, we sent out the application and basically a green team or a middle school green team is paired up with one, one, one mentor from the YLC group. And um, each mentor will have like the responsibility and tasks and it depends on each person's green team because each green team has like a different goal or a different idea of what they want. Um, the point of this uh, program is to help with outreach, um, especially towards middle schools, because I feel like right now we, we our target audience tends to be high schoolers. So we kind of wanted to expand on that. And uh, something to keep in mind is as a mentor, we facilitate, but at the end of the day, the students are the leaders because they're the one that drive the project ideas. Um, a few things that we do is just like communicate with teachers, can't see the other thing but yeah we'll we'll keep going into what we do in the next slides so amina you're next yeah so we're each going to go through with our like each green team so i led the qsi green team and this was a new green team that they started this year so we, i helped the um teacher build it from scratch um and it's been going really well they made their own social media their instagram and twitter and they're working on making a TikTok right now and they make graphics and they post every week and they've been doing a really good job with that but the main project they've been working on is creating a teach-in for their school. So I've been helping them research and develop slides. And then at the end of the year, they're going to present it to their school. And it's kind of like a mixture of information, but then also like actionable steps that students at their school can do. Uh, and then today, actually, I met with them and we did kind of like a letter writing session where they all wrote letters to the education committee in the Senate saying why there should be um, more climate education in New York public schools. And so I collected all the letters and I'm going to send them off to the Senate Education Committee. So that's kind of like one of the larger things that they've been doing. Um, but yeah, that's what the QSI Green Team did. Uh, so my Green Team is PSMS4. It's in the Bronx. Again, it's newly a uh, a new green team this year and we meet bi-weekly. Um, so for my green team, at least, we did a lot of educational meetings. So I really taught them about what sustainability meant in NYC and how to do research and doing these slides on like their research and what they care about. So like right now we're doing water consumption and we're taking these water surveys and hopefully in the future, the kids are gonna create their forms and send it out to, to other students in the school. Um, 
and that's a way to you know get them to outreach to other students we're planning to create a social media and a website to kind of leave like a footprint behind for future years one of the challenges is keeping consistency i think like my green team at least my teacher has been really busy and i it typically like the meetings get to t like get pushed back an hour or so so i think that's like one difficulty that i've had and also a lot of the green team members are eighth graders and we need at least like some sixth graders or seventh graders to keep the program going next year uh, Kevin. Yeah, so I got paired with Miss Calloway uh, at a school down in uh, downtown Manhattan, somewhere towards yeah, somewhere somewhere towards downtown. And one of the first things we tried to do was, she noticed that a lot of the trash cans in the school, obviously before we went remotely, um, a lot of people like pretty much disregarded all the trash cans, like if they were like by the type of waste that they were, like recycle or general waste. And she basically she wanted us to write a, basically a proposal to the principal. Um, explaining that concern and obviously we did that because at that point like some custodians as well were also like not on board they would just like throw trash wherever it were like trash was trash and that really isn't how it works around so we wrote that up and then we basically message approached it with a message to him and he was very approving of it uh, something that students did um, were we basically made like these little posters to try to post them around the school obviously it was a little bit difficult given the current like remote and um blended environment with the students. And those posters will be hung around the school, obviously, about to try to attract more students. So obviously the club can go, it's a relatively new club, but we wanted to go like at least a few more years. And I think we had a similar problem to where there were like too many eighth graders as well. Yeah, and my group to quickly run through, they were already pretty established within their school. They've done it in person. So I mainly just helped with the online aspect of stuff and sort of organizing all of their thoughts. So like they had like a green crafts idea. So I was like, all right, I'm going to help you guys sort of organize this onto a website, which we had gotten up. And the main problem that they had was that the other middle school students didn't really like open up to me yet. So I had to try and, you know, try and use some jokes and stuff to open up to them. And now they talk to me like every five seconds. Um, and they also had problems with outreach to like the rest of their school because it was either you knew a lot about it or you knew nothing at all. So like they had like stuff like the Green Team Film Festival, which in like five days has like nine whole Google Docs pages worth of comments of people saying they like stuff and I didn't even bother reading all the comments. There were so many. So my green team was a lot more established. So I just helped them with the technical aspect and using their creativity to bring it beyond their green team, but like in their actual day-to-day -day life. Oh, so hello, my school was IS364 Gateway. And um, this was a school that never had a green team, but they did have a STEM after school program that before this year, uh, they did projects using recycled materials to make new things. Um, they surveyed like local residents about their water usage, um, but never really on like with the focus of the climate action. So I worked with 200 teachers this year to kind of um, engage the students and use the same activities they did before, but also mix in some climate education, such as you know, what are some of the examples of climate change and how have they specifically been affected. Um, right now, uh, so far, we went through, you know, like 12 lessons slash activities, answering some of these or exploring some of these questions. Currently, we're preparing students for their local district's earth restoration STEM championship. And we're working with like uh, solar rovers and reusable plastic. Some of the problems we had was starting on um, the remote green team was very difficult to engage because everyone's like behind the cameras and computers. Some people are tired. And this was an after school program, so everyone might be, you know, distracted or unfocused. And we tried to engage people more by adding in um, more icebreakers and more uh, fun activities. Another one was that their school recently made a change to like hybrid slash in person, um, like two months ago. So right now we have to, you know, kind of juggle between me and two other teachers because the students are mixed between different rooms and. We have to get them laptops, we have to get them different materials to um, properly do the lessons. But I think right now, uh, since this year it is the first year, we're just trying to you know, experiment with climate education at IS364 and lay the groundwork for next year, which hopefully uh, we can build on this. We can skip over this. 
Yeah. You sure? Okay. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Anything you guys want to say to wrap it up? Yeah, I can just say I think this was really difficult starting like virtually like these all these new green teams and it was really difficult for like Jalen and I to organize, but I'm so proud of everyone. I feel like I kind of like pushed everyone into like taking the responsibility of like being a mentor and I didn't know if everyone could do it, but you all ended up doing amazing work and I'm really proud of everyone. Big round of applause. Um, I mean, every group project like truly was stellar, but this one I think is particularly interesting because in a lot of ways you guys are, at, it's like a double mentorship going on. So has some added challenges. Um, we've got a couple of minutes for questions. Does anybody have any? I guess my, my question, if no one else is, uh, wants to ask anything, is like, again, how are you guys thinking you're going to continue the work for next year? I, I think a lot of you mentioned like this worry of having eighth graders in the group and things like that. Um, have you guys figured out a plan for like, are the teachers at least going to continue over to next year? Or have you had any thoughts about what you want, how you guys want to address that? Yeah, we haven't discussed the specifics yet. But what I would imagine is that um, hopefully maybe we'd have more YLC members in it next year so we can just like um, have relationships with more green teams at different schools and then work a lot on outreach for the clubs themselves and like have a more detailed plan of like education and also actionable steps that each green team can do um, to hopefully like develop that over the summer to like make it stronger next year. Um, also, one thing that's like, I guess, like a big issue is that we don't know if we would continue virtually or remote because some schools like my school is in the Bronx and it's really far and they start really early. So it wouldn't be possible for a student like me to get there on time. So I think like the way we would proceed is most likely just the mentorship itself would be virtually um, or just like something there just to help the students when they need help like or the teachers. So we'll see more about the details, but hopefully it continues. Those are great points. I have a quick question in follow up to what you were talking about, Amina. Do you guys have a sense of whether you want to deepen the impact that the schools you're already working with or diversify the schools that you're working with? Because sometimes it's hard to do both at the same time. <laughs> Jalen says deepen, they're new. Yeah, I know. I no, I feel like because it started like halfway through the year, it's only been like a semester. And a lot of it, energy was like put into actually building the green team rather than what the substance of the green team. So I think we'll probably maintain the same green teams next year, but hopefully we'll have more YLC members so we can have more mentor green teams. One more question. Do we have any other YLC members who want to ask something? Anna, go for it. Yeah, I was just wondering if you guys felt like you got like a good diversity of schools and if you feel like you were able to help schools who you think might have like been struggling otherwise, do you think it worked like that? Um, I one thing is that I think that we did outreach more because it's not just like schools. Like I'm uh, with the school that's in the Bronx and I would have never reached out if it was like in person um one thing is I also feel like the schools that have the ability to meet in person kind of have more resources and maybe others that don't because um you know they can meet online they have a teacher available so I would just say that I think we definitely like reached out more and like we kind of accomplished our goal of diverse like outreaching yeah I definitely agree with that I know at least for my school um they don't have as many resources. So I think for most of the schools that we talked to, it seems like they all really benefited from it. So I think that was good. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. A round of applause for them. And then um, let's do a bunch of snaps for this entire group. This was so, so awesome. I'm gonna send you guys a link in the chat to a survey. There's some questions that I have for you guys about the group projects. And then there's some of the group projects submitted questions, some didn't. So some of them you might literally just be putting a next through um, that, that particular section. So I'm sending, oh, it looks like this might be the editable version. Hold on, I might need to re redo this link. 
um, while I'm sending the, while I'm looking for the non-editable version. Um, so you guys can submit your answers. Um, we're going to start the four A's. I have several announcements, but if anybody has any that they want to share out while I'm looking for the link, um, please feel free. So we've got announcements, appreciation, apologies, and I always forget one. I think it's asks. Asks. Nice. Thank you, Anna. See, you got it's because you're an A, you knew you were connected to it. Um, so I'll open up the floor. I'm going to meet myself and find this, find this link. Any, any of the four A's. Okay. Hi. Uh, I have an A. Appreciate is appreciation. Appreciate. A. Um, I actually had to go to a quick meeting, but I definitely wanted to come back for the A's, the four A's. Um, I appreciate everybody on this call. Um, I know there was, oh, yes, there was um, a lot of upper YLC sustainability uh, members uh, that came to this meeting today. So I just appreciate that you guys came in to hear about our group projects today. And um, I appreciate working with all of you guys. And even though I did step out, I did get to hear some of the programs. And I think um, a lot of the, um, I think a lot of the schools that uh, you guys reached out to and, you know, talked to definitely appreciate what you guys have been doing. Um, I am I appreciate everything you guys. Have, we've had a great year. This is a great productive year. Um, so yeah, I know this is like the second to last meeting, but definitely have a lot of appreciation for this group right here. We appreciate you too. Anybody else have any, any things they want to share? And I sent the link in the chat, FYI. Everybody's being shy. Okay, um, I'll share mine. I have a little list of them. Um, first of all, I emailed you guys already about our end of the year video that I'm pulling together. Oh, Jalen, you've got one. Let me do this one and then I'll, I'll, I'll call you out. Um, video submissions, a reminder to submit those videos for the end of the year video by Tuesday at midnight. Um, so just a, a quick reminder, Tuesday at 11.59 p.m., because so that people don't get confused about which day that means. Um, and I just want to do um, a quick reminder that there are a few different options of prompts. You don't have to do all of them. I just didn't want to force anybody to speak to something that didn't inspire them. So feel free to pick whichever ones work best for you and just make sure to upload them to the Google Drive. Um, Jalen, you're up. Yeah, I wanted to give A's to everyone. Appreciation A's, yeah. Because honestly, this year was really unpredictable. I remember when we started off the projects, we had no idea what we were, you know, looking at, or we had to plan for everything, basically. So I just wanted to appreciate everyone and that we did an amazing job, you know. I think this year was really difficult, and we did the best that we could, and that's all that matters. Couldn't agree more. Valerie, you have something you want to say? Yeah, I want to have an appreciation. Jalen kind of hit it, but I like wanted to especially appreciate the YLC core because a lot of you guys came up with the projects going into this year. So when I joined, I had like Anna and Ivy and they already had an existing plan what they wanted the student uh, facing resources to be like. So we already had something to work off of. So I want to appreciate you guys for coming up with these ideas in advance and creating something the rest of us could work off of. Love that, more snaps for that. Um, okay, the next one is a, is an ask. Um, we often, our office does a little like end of the year video to send people off during the summer. So I thought it would be cute to have our YLC be involved in it. So if, if you're willing to turn your camera on to be in part of this video, I wanted to try to see if we can all at the same time say have a sustainable summer and it'll get incorporated into that end of the year video. Okay, it's gonna be tough. So I'm going to try to count us down. We're already recording, so that that's nice. Um, yeah, Jalen, I know. Shout out to when we did in the past. It was rough. Um, <laughs> but let's give it a try. We'll do a couple times. And if it's horrible, then maybe we will try something different. Okay. So we're going to all say, 
Have a sustainable summer. That's it. Okay, ready? Three, oh wait, after one. Three, two, one. Have a sustainable summer. Honestly, that was better than I expected. Let's do it again. Does anyone else want to try to lead us into it? Because I might be bad at it. How fast are we trying to say it? Yeah, what are we, what's our pace here? <laughs> I think like normal speaking pace. Like, have a sustainable summer. Something like that. But, like yeah, Christina. but like finish it as if there was an exclamation mark afterwards. I like a question mark at the end though. <laughs> uh, have a question sustainable mark. summer? Maybe. <laughs> um, okay, so just normal speaking pace. Okay. Does anyone want to lead us into this one or should I do it again? I'll do it again. Three, two, one. Have, Have a sustainable, a sustainable summer. summer. Have a sustainable summer. Okay, let's try something a little different. Who wants to say have? Who wants to say a sustainable? And who wants to say summer? We'll do three different people actually speaking. Might be worse, might be better. And the rest of us can just be excited and enthusiastic, muted. So who wants to be our speakers? Okay, guys, come on, we need someone. I can say, Ooh, I can go. Okay, Camilla's got have. Who's next? I can go. Galen? Yeah. Sweet. Can I say summer? Can I say okay, summer? Okay, you can say summer. We need a sustainable. I'll do it. Was that Amina? Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, wait. No, I, I said I can say sustainable. Max said that too. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Now you guys, you know, do one of you guys want to take A? <laughs> Fine, okay. I guess I'll take A. <laughs> okay. So, all right, you guys know your order? Should I count us down or do you want to, Camilla? Because you're first, so it kind of makes sense. I can count us down. Okay. Three, two, one. Have A. Sustainable. Summer. <laughs> that was great i think let's do that one more time and we'll we'll just choose whatever works best i think that was pretty good and let's all try to be dynamic the whole time i forgot okay ready okay three two one have a sustainable summer Awesome, y'all. Okay, we'll see. Those are either either be really cute or really weird. We'll we'll find out after. Um, okay, that was my ask. I have a few other quick announcements. I'm getting notified that my computer is also about to die, so that's good because it won't let us go very long over. Um, any other quick announcements before I share those other things? No. Um, quick thank you to everybody who applied for the YLC core again. I really appreciate it. I am excited to review your applications. We will let you know by hopefully the end of next week if you're going to be accepted. Um, a quick shout out that I'm going to be sending an end of the year survey reflecting on our work as a YLC um, the whole year. So please, please, please complete that. Um, I'm just looking to see. Oh, I do have a charger. Um, Please, please, please complete that um, by our last YLC meeting, which is May 20th. Um, and then uh, two other quick things. This one's an ask. Um, we have a sustainability showcase that our office runs every year. Um, this year's is going to be Thursday, June 17th from 2 to 3.30. Um, and we've been asked to lead a workshop. Um, so I was thinking we could do one of two things because we've already led these workshops. Either we repeat the virtual green team, um, your awesome spider web activity. It's a little shorter, so I don't think we have time for all of the activities you guys did, but I think the, the spider web activity works great on its own. Um, or we also had the awesome fresh kills um, presentation. So I think those would be two great presentations that would be pretty low lift because they already exist. Um, so I wanted to just put a feeler out there. Um, if you are interested in helping to lead that workshop, can you guys just respond in the chat um, confirming that? 
And Jalen, to answer your question about if I have a new laptop, I do not have a new laptop, but I did move apartments. So the background is different. That might be why. <laughs> um, okay, Valerie says if it's zero waste, she can. Okay, a bunch of people are, are volunteering. So um, thank you, that's awesome. Um, if you want to help lead and can stick around for a few minutes at the very end, maybe we can just solidify which plan we're going with and if we want to do a quick meeting to prep for it before June, um, just so we can set that plan in action. Stick around if you can. If you can't, we will loop you in later. Um, Anara, I think, are you still here? Did you have to go? Looks like Anna had to go, right? Um, Eliza, can you do me a favor and can you just quickly copy the names that that are in here and then I'll I'll get them from you after that the names that just volunteered. The last thing um, for our final YLC meeting, in addition to the video we're gonna do, um, last year we did a cute activity that was really fun. It was like a drawing exercise, but a little bit different than the drawing one we've done before. You guys might remember, I think Carol led it last year, um, but Carol has a, a new job that she can't join most of our meetings. So I'd love for someone else to lead it. Basically you draw a picture and you tell people how to draw it and they have to guess what you drew. Um, it's really fun. Jalen, you remember it. Um, so I was wondering if somebody would be willing to lead it. Um, Jalen, you remember, I, if I'm describing it poorly, please, someone else can also jump, jump in. No, anybody willing to do that to lead it? Jalen, you remembered what it was. Are you willing? Yeah. Uh, it's for a, a YLC meeting. That's for the last YLC meeting. We'll do that at some point. Just, just some yeah, sure. guide I'll through some drawing. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think that's all I have. Thank you guys for sticking around. Um, amazing work today, guys. It was so wonderful to hear about your group projects. I am so proud of all of you. I want to do a, a big appreciation coming from me. Um, this is truly my favorite hour every two weeks. So thank you guys for always inspiring me and doing such amazing work and inspiring other people to do it through all of these various channels. Um, I'm really proud of you guys. You guys are doing incredible work here and outside of it. And that's amazing. So claps for everyone or snaps for everyone. Enthusiasm for everyone. Um, if you guys want to stick around for a couple minutes to just chat about um, planning for the showcase, please hang out if you can. Otherwise, have an amazing rest of your day. Enjoy the sunshine and I'll see you for our last meeting next week or two weeks away. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'm going to stop recording. I don't think we need that anymore.